Rog, Bryce and Miles. Weekdays from 5.30. The Rocks Morning Rumble. There was a Flat Earth conference. We talked about this yesterday. You may have seen it on the news as well. Over the weekend in Auckland, uh, here's some of the main players uh, from the conference. 90% of our membership, though, is in the closet. I kind of treat it like uh, the old movie, The Fight Club, which was uh, the first rule of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. It is very true. I mean, you have to choose your audience wisely. You don't feel like you're spinning 1,600 k's an hour, do you? No one believes that we can fall over the edge and we're not a pancake flying in space. He says that would be ridiculous. So what do they believe? One of the main models is that we're a flat stationary Earth with a dome over top and that the sun, moon and stars and everything we see in the sky is contained inside. Nothing upsets Miles more than oh us God. talking flat Earth. That Obviously, I don't believe in flat Earthers, but, yeah. you know, for the sake of a, a radio show, it's good to bring it up. Yeah, it you, is. Do, you do Why? get callers. Why is it? It's just a, it's just a <laughs> well, it's very just... small, <laughs> ignorant p- part of society that do not be, need to be given airtime. You know that Bryce trolls you, though, Miles. You know Bryce just pretends to believe. So that woman who just goes... Just to upset you. That woman who said, oh, you don't really feel like you're going 1,600 kilometres. Yeah. Valid point. <laughs> okay. Feels like I'm pretty stationary right now. Because... The speed is constant. Mm. From the time mm. you are born, mm. you are only going yeah. one speed, so you never feel any change. You never feel like you're going slower or faster. Mm. You're used to the speed, a lot like when you're travelling in a car. Sounds like some mumbo-jumbo. <laughs> now, after 7.30, Bryce, you want to commit Fact. the next 20 or 25 minutes of uh, the show. Why are we wasting yeah. valuable uh, airtime ta- on this? Ta- Let's I'll... talk about Code Browns <laughs> in a pool. No, that's just silly. <laughs> Um, Am I right? I'll, t- I'll tell you what, guess what, guys? What? Exclusive. Yeah. The only one on New Zealand radio uh, this side of 8 o'clock, Mark Sargent, the oh, one and only. Me. The guy from Beyond the Curve, from the Netflix doco. No. The head flat earther. In the world. In the world. We've got no. him on. The main guy, the big cheese. No. You've got him on. He will be on our show before 8 a.m. <laughs> and I can't wait to have him change Mole's mind. <laughs> There's not a chance. <laughs> that is going to be happening no. in 20 minutes, you reckon, Don't Bryce? Well, we'll have to wait and see. You. We've been talking flat earthers for some time now. Bryce, you love to troll Miles. Miles, uh, nothing annoys Miles more than chat of flat earthers. Um, you hit Miles with a question uh, a while ago. My question is, Miles, how come then, if we're not a flat earth, how come the sun lights up all of Earth, yet space is dark? <laughs> God, you're an idiot. Now, Bryce, you've made an outrageous claim that you've got the head flat earther in the world, Mark Sargent. He's the top recruiter in the world. He was here just in the weekend. The star of Beyond the Curve, the uh, mm. the Netflix doco, mm. and uh, he, he's only doing one. Uh, he's supposed to only be doing one radio show. Um, and that's on the big opposition. And that's after eight. We've got him before eight, guys, an exclusive. He is before on. eight this morning. But Gav, uh, we're talking flat earthers. Gav, what do you reckon? I reckon what are these fellas smoking, mate? They go to space, eh? And uh, you know, and and they're looking down on on Earth, and you can f- can see it's round. Exactly, Gav. Have, have you been up to space, have you, Gav? <laughs> nah, mate. Well, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, America's been there, mate. Well, have or was they? that just all uh, um, Russia's been there? Mm. Let's not get into the moon landings, please, Gavin. Mm. <laughs> we haven't got enough time for that, mate. Gavin, an but... eloquent and well-put <laughs> argument. Yeah. Glad that he's on your side, Mel. <laughs> yeah, that's... Some, <laughs> real, <laughs> some real intelligent backing up really, of your facts here, buddy. Really reinforced uh, my, my argument there. Thank you, Gavin. Thanks, Gav. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, See mate. You, mate. mate. Matty, good morning. How are you, mate? Mate, yes, I'm opening good. up the closet door here. Are there you was, wanting to come on out? There's a flat earth conference in the weekend, and Brycey... You know, you can be convinced. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to discussion, yeah. is all I'm saying, Rog. What do you make of it all, Matt? Because I think the earth is rectangle. <laughs> oh, rectangle! Oh, brilliant! Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Oh. Okay, Matt, explain to but, me in, in less than 30 seconds why it's rectangle. What purpose oh, is it? Oh, just to be saying different. Have you never heard going to the corners of the, wor- of the earth? <laughs> the four corners of the world! <laughs> you know, it could be square. What, what makes it a rectangle, though? Well, I don't know. That's up to debate. You should, uh, <laughs> you should put that out there. Have you seen Put any... what out there? <laughs> have you seen <laughs> anything on you? Rectangle. So whereabouts are we in the rectangle being New Zealand? Yeah. Obviously, we're right in the middle because we're the best country in the world. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well... Now, Matt, I said we wouldn't bully, but you, 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 you dumb shit. <laughs> Matt, you're cocked. Get off my phone line. 
See ya. Get out of here, man. Piss off. <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks for calling. <laughs> uh, feel oh, f- hang on. What? Hang on. What? Sorry? Hello? Who's on the phone, mate? Who's on, who's on, who's on the phone? Sorry, mate. Um, these guys are talking. One second. What's that? Five. Okay. Great. Sorry, guys. Five minutes. Mark Sargent on the phone. <laughs> Flat Earth, all, all, the head of the world. Confirmed. Flat Earth. Oh, my God. That's on the way. I told you guys that I would have a goddamn exclusive, and I have. He's a Flat Earth recru- uh, recruiter. You'll know him from Beyond the Curve. Mm. Oh, the You've Netflix You've seen him show, on yes. Netflix. Yes. He's in the country. Mark Sargent joining yes. us on the phone. Good morning, Mark. <laughs> good morning. Thanks, guys, for having me. Mark, a very good morning to you. Now, yes, you have been in the country. Were you surprised at how many New Zealanders believe the earth is flat that turned up to your conference last weekend? I was a little surprised. Uh, yeah, I knew the turnout was going to be fairly thin, you know, because it's New Zealand. But mm. at the same time, we had to bring in extra chairs in, and the media was all over us. So, fantastic. Why did you come to the end of the earth, uh, New Zealand, to do a flat earth <laughs> conference? Uh, because I was invited. There's, we have people everywhere. Uh, real quick story. I was flying here and a guy was passing out bread in the aisles and he looks at me and he goes, Hey, do you want some bread? And I go, okay. And I pick this little piece right there and he goes, yeah, you want it because it's flat and it's round. And he winks at me and he goes, why? And it's like, are you serious? Never seen this guy in my life. Happens to me all the time. Um, also, um, what do you make of when people write stories about how you're here and they say people from around the globe have come mm. to uh, see you? Do, you? do you know that's, that's trolling you? Oh, that is the oldest joke. That yeah. might as well be a knock-knock joke. We've been opening up the phones before to New Zealanders. You said 90% of people um, that believe in flat earth, you know, that they're in the closet. They don't want to admit to it because of the ridicule, blah, blah, blah. I'm surrounded by doubters here. I'm actually quite open to the conversation. What I want you to do, see, they laugh at me. What I want you to do, um, Mark, is um, if you can, can you give us three of your three of your main reasons to try and convince these turkeys? Uh, my three best points, the first one would be long-distance photography. If the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, that just means the curvature goes off. You're going to go behind the curve on the other side of the hill. A boat, a lighthouse, whatever, HD technology has changed that. We can now bring things back into frame at distances that are way, way beyond the curve. Two, vacuum of space versus gravity. And that is, where does our atmosphere end and the vacuum of space begin? Because I've talked to industrial vacuum experts and people that are in physics that say that the vacuum of space is way, way too powerful. We, the va- our atmosphere should be gone if it was a globe. But if it's enclosed, remember, we're not talking about just a flat world. We're talking about flat enclosed with walls and a, and a, a floor and a ceiling. Uh, and my third best point would be the Van Allen radiation belt trap question, which is, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? If you say yes, then how did the Americans make round trips through those deadly belts with only aluminum and plastic as shielding and nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, and there's still five of them walking around today? And if you say, no, they're not deadly, then I say, go fine, go to the NASA website, nasa.gov, and look for a video called Orion Trial by Fire. It was made at the end of 2014. They say that, yeah, we can't even test capsules with men in them because the radiation belts are so deadly and we haven't solved the radiation problem. Well, you solved it in 1969, so how do you have a radiation problem? Between those three questions, most physicists, like the one from Georgetown I was supposed to work with last week, just shut down, folded like a card table. It's, it's tough to get scientists to talk to us. I guess as well, Mark, because they don't want to give you any more oxygen. They don't want to believe uh, that science can actually be called into question and fuel to the fire from your point of view. Science, it's, it's hypocritical. If, you know, if you've ever been to a planetarium, the very definition of a planetarium is a building that fakes space. And yet they won't believe. It's like, well, what if we're in a planetarium that's 20,000 miles wide? We didn't build it, but it's very, very possible. And again, The Truman Show wasn't just a movie, in my opinion. I think it was a, 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 a much bigger picture. Okay, so I'm the doubter in the studio, Mark. My biggest thing is yeah. a lunar eclipse. The Earth between the moon right. and the sun and the shadow mm-hmm. of the Earth is round. When it's, when it's in between the sun and the moon. Why? Look, when it comes to everything in the sky, you're looking at an image. You're looking at a giant television screen, a giant projection. The sun and the moon are bigger, but the planets and the stars are just pretty little lights in the sky. Do you think what we see in the sky is a, a projector, like a projector onto a screen on a wall? Sure. Well, how do we do it? Well, yeah. I don't, I don't, we didn't have that technology in the, in the Middle Ages. How, how do, do these philosophers like Aristotle... And the like deal with this kind of thing back when they were alive and they were doing their theories we are in, not in a structure that was built by us whoever built this place 
is much older and much more powerful than us. It's either an advanced technology or it's the divine. Now, I think for me, game over. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> I think Starship said it best when they said, we built this city on rock and roll. And that's what I believe. Uh, Sergeant, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. From Beyond the Curve, you can check it out. You can answer your own questions. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Hey, Thanks. Mark, Mark what, what, a, what a load of yeah. shit. <laughs> thank you, Mark. I'm ready. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. Mark. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> I've come to a new conclusion. I don't believe in Mark. Oh, you don't believe in him, though? I don't believe in him. Oh, you just got him. You just had yards answer for five minutes. And I don't necessarily believe in (laughs) traditional science. I believe in Starship. (laughs) And we built this city on rock and roll. It's a hell of a song. I just love it when you do the radio bit. Mm, I did do the radio bit of that, yeah. Might play that for you after eight, actually. Right, no, it's, no. It's, it's in my other... Uh, the other day, you know, I said I've got my top five moments of radio. That's in it as well. Mm, mm. Well, there we go. There you go. Eh? A lot of positive texts. <laughs> no, there's no positive so like, there's, there's no so positive So, like, one, uh, one is um, my ears are bleeding. Um, I just Mal's, lost 10 IQ points. Mel's, you dropped your nuts. With the flat earth guy. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I gave him his space. I um, let him I let him spout his bullshit. My favourite is can you change the channel in the sky, please? <laughs> <laughs> Rog Price and Miles. Sweet takes from 5.30. The Rock's morning rumble. Hey. Guy Williams, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Good right? morning, mate. Good Welcome. Welcome. You know what you are though? You are to some people, and you'd know it, you'd be the yeah. first to say it. You're quite polarizing to people, right? In not in a way, but sort of similar to a guy we just had on the phone before eight o'clock. Oh yes. Um Mark Sargent. The oh, Oh my god, Earther. I just met that dude. You were just there. Now, this, we're going to talk more about your new TV show soon, right? But yeah. for your new TV show, you were there interviewing him at it. He's the you, flat earther. You, you've met him face to face? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I reckon he's a genius and not in the way you think. I think Flat Earth is some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. In my, sorry for swearing. That's some of right. the dumbest stuff I've ever heard in my life. But that guy is tricking so many people traveling around the world, <laughs> talking about how the earth is a pancake. Yeah. He has cracked life. Yeah. yeah. Absolute He's genius. For it, right? I love how you guys were like, oh, he just came in here and bombarded with, with facts. Did you guys get outsmarted by a flat earther just before? <laughs> Did that well, really just happen? Yeah, well, the thing is, they, he, was start, he started talking about some sort of nuclear radiation zone that NASA's. Yeah, planned. they just so baffle you. Get, you. They, just lose, they, they lose baffle you. you with astrophysics. Yeah, but if, you, if you yeah. got another smart guy to yeah. talk to him, he would get destroyed. That's but because it was you guys versus him, yeah. You're yeah. done. Yeah, you know, yeah. totally. You, yeah. You're 100%. So yeah. our back end is in science. Yeah. Uh, that's who we're, we're on science's side. Yeah. It's like a really bad Avengers film. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, it's like, come on now. Yeah. Hey, Fred Earth guy, that oh. sucks. What did you take out of the, uh, you were there at the convention? What did you, not so much him. We, we've all got our own theory on him mm. now after hearing him for five minutes. Um, I know where I sit. Where, um, <laughs> where, where, what did you make of the people who attended it? Yes. Well, you um, know, were they, to me, were they like a Destiny's Church? Type crowd or mm. whatever were they people who who just want something to believe in? Definitely battlerish. De- definitely um, a religious kind of vibe, and nothing against religious people because I think most religious yeah. people are, are, are all right. But they're guys who are like, I base my science in the Bible, okay. and that's a red flag for yeah. me straight away. Don't yeah. get me wrong, Bible, hell of a yarn, great <laughs> murder mystery story, but it's just not, it's 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 not how to base like, oh, it just. I was I've been talking to conspiracy theorists now for like two yeah. weeks straight, and I'm going insane. I'm gonna put my head through a spike, like just talking to these people, <laughs> and you can't reason with them, no matter no. what. They're just so, oh, it's infuriating, and I don't understand science either, but I just know what they're saying doesn't add up the world is flat it's surrounded by an ice wall and yes. it's guarded by it's guarded by nasa with machine guns or something yeah. well, i mean you that's are one, that's one theory you're kind of explaining game of thrones really yeah, yeah, yeah. surrounded by walls <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And dragons it's a, yeah it's a game of thrones vibe and I, yeah. I do like the idea of questioning everything and stuff like that i just feel like they haven't quite done enough questioning